Hi guys, so today we're going to go over carbohydrates, a little bit of fats, and uh, that'll be it. So we're going to start off with carbohydrates, but last time we talked about our monomers, our polymers, and our macromolecules, and the relationship between all three. So monomers are like the single unit. Put some monomers together, we get a polymer, and then put a bunch of polymers together, and we get this gigantic macromolecule. So our first macromolecule we're going to talk about is carbohydrates. Now keeping all of these terms organized is something you guys have to do so each one of our monomers each one of our polymers has a specific name for example you guys are all students okay that is like our monomer name all right we can um use students as like a general term to describe all of you we can use monomers as a general term to describe like all of our different uh, monomers for our macromolecules. But we need to give each one their own name. So you guys are students, but I might, you know, call you each by your individual name. You could be Johnny or Kristen, whatever, you know. So we're going to go through them all. And here is your first two here for carbohydrates. So there is a root word in our monomers and polymers of carbohydrates. And that is saccharide, all right? So saccharide comes from the word saccharo, which means sugar, all right? So let me get our other chart out here. And this is on my website, guys. So you can use this, try to keep yourself organized with everything, and then study it to help you learn all your individual monomer and polymer names. So our monomer of a carbohydrate is a mono saccharide right polymer the one they gave you is a poly saccharide i'm going to add another one here which is called a disaccharide so a monosaccharide mono means one so that is one saccharide one sugar all right a disaccharide, di means two. So we have a special name for two sugars put together. Yeah, it's a polymer because we have two monomers put together. But the two monomers or the two monosaccharides has a special term called disaccharide. And then after that, they're like, oh, the heck with it. Let's just call them all polysaccharides. So one is a monosaccharide, two is a disaccharide. After that, it's just a polysaccharide. So anything with carbohydrates, make sure you know that it is dealing with a sugar. All right. And we'll keep filling up that chart, guys. So our monosaccharides are going to have a very specific uh, structure to them. And it follows this pattern here, which is CH2O. Another way you could say this is CNH2NON. What this means, guys, is whatever the carbon is, whether the carbon is 2, 3, 4, whatever, we're going to have that same number of oxygens. And whatever that number is, we're going to have twice as many hydrogens. So glucose is one of the main monosaccharides we're going to talk about. There's glucose, there's fructose, and galactose. Those are, those are the three main ones. But they have this chemical formula here of C6H12O6. You guys can see that the carbons and the oxygens are always going to be the same number. The hydrogens are going to be double whatever that number is. Okay? So if it is not in this format, this C-N-H-2-N-O-N, it is not a carbohydrate. It has to follow that pattern. So let's go back to our little thing here. Structure is C-N-H-2-N-O-N. -N All right. And then our N's. Sorry, guys. Okay, we want to subscript that. There we go. Okay, so there's our format. If we want to do an example, it'd be C. C6, 
H1206. All right, there's your example, guys. You can see it's in the CNH2NON uh, format. And then our function of carbohydrates is short term energy. So carbohydrates provide us with short term energy. And that's pretty much our main function, everything you guys need to know about carbohydrates. So make sure you know all this stuff, guys, you're able to identify a carbohydrate. All right, so here are some different sugars. These are different monosaccharides of carbohydrates. Now, what I want you guys to be able to differentiate from using this picture, we're gonna have two different terms. We're gonna have one term called ketone and one term called aldehyde. So let me label these so you guys can see the difference here. This one down here, this sugar, this monosaccharide is a ketone, K-E-T-O-N-E. -E. This one over here is an aldehyde. So two different functional groups. There's this functional group here, and then there's this one here. Difference between them is the ketone one is gonna have a double bonded oxygen right in the middle somewhere. So it's gonna be in the middle. There's not there's not going to be an H bonded to it, okay? Whereas aldehydes have the carbon, the double bonded oxygen, and that H bonded to it. So this one has the H bonded to it. There we go. All right, so there's your difference between a ketone sugar and a aldehyde sugar. All right, when we are making our disaccharide, polysaccharide, whatever, in other words, we're combining monosaccharides together, there's gonna to be a covalent bond between them. So we're going through a dehydration, synthesis, condensation, whatever you wanna call it, reaction, where we are joining our monosaccharides together, all right? That bond that is formed, that gives off water, is going to be called a glycosidic linkage. And here's an example of one right here, guys. You can see we're giving off water there. We're going to take glucose and fructose, combine them together, and our disaccharide, for this example, our, dis I dis ugh, our disaccharide, when we're combining glucose and fructose, that's going to be sucrose. Okay, so glucose plus fructose, two monosaccharides, equals sucrose. Okay. Now there's two others to be made aware of, guys. All right, two other equations. There is galactose. Galactose. So that's a monosaccharide. If we add that to glucose, we get lactose out of it. So that's our second one. So glucose plus fructose is sucrose. Galactose plus glucose is lactose, and then glucose added to another glucose gives us something called a disaccharide called maltose. And those are your three. So we have disaccharide, disaccharide, disaccharide. Glucose, fructose, and galactose are all monosaccharides. Okay, we already went over this, guys. Uh, polysaccharides, you know, they are going to be our polymer, our very long polymer of carbohydrates. And they're going to be able to store some of our energy. And we're, we might store it in our liver or other places, but um, their goal was to be able to store some of that energy. So that way, if we need some energy, we're just going to be plucking off some monosaccharides. Here's a short video, guys. Now, we talked about carbohydrates. They are all talking about sugars okay now there was a diet that they made back in the day all right and it was called the atkins diet and here's a little video on it. hi guys in this video i want to share with you some feedback on the problems with the 
Atkins Diet, okay? So I have the Atkins New Diet Revolution and the Atkins New Diet Cookbook. A little conflicting, but here's the, here's the problem that I have. Uh, on some references, it says you can have one cup, <laughs> one to three cups of vegetables, okay? That's way too low. If you don't consume enough vegetables, how are you going to flush out all the fat? You're going to end up with a fatty liver because the vegetables actually counteract all that protein, okay? It also says uh, right here, if you're not hungry, okay, consume nothing, skip food, skip a meal, or consume a protein snack. Bad advice because you're going to stimulate insulin. Protein will trigger insulin. So you're going to raise the insulin, you're going to lower the blood sugars, boom, you're going to be hungry and craving again. So we are trying to avoid insulin. Okay, that's bad advice. Um, also, they mentioned not to skip meals, which right down here, do not skip meals. Well, if you're not hungry, skip the meal. Because if you eat when you're not hungry, you're just going to raise insulin again. Uh, allows artificial sweeteners, so that's what they're recommending, aspartame. Um, again, our artificial sweeteners can have a tendency to increase insulin and knock you out of ketosis. I mean, try and experiment. Check your ketones before and after. You'll see it for yourself. Uh, consume uh, three meals a day or five small meals, okay? Well, again, you don't want to do that because you're going to spike insulin five times, and you want to only do three meals or maybe even two meals, okay? And also down here, unlimited protein. Again, anything more than six ounces, maybe seven ounces, you're going to start to generate more insulin. Too much protein stimulates insulin. So these are the problems with the Atkins diet. Now, some people can lose weight on it very easily um, because they're doing a moderate version and their metabolism is very, very fast just because they're cutting out all the carbs. But if you tweak this and do more ketogenic and do it healthily, you can really control your metabolism and actually fix it, okay? Thanks for watching. Okay. So for this video, guys, on the Atkins diet, the Atkins diet was made, and its goal was to, yeah, make you lose weight, but to cut out carbohydrates, cut out sugars. Now, vegetables do have some sugars in them. Not all of them are usable to us, but they're there. We might get a little bit out of it. But if you cut out sugars, what did sugars, what was the function of these carbohydrates? Well, they were for energy. So if you cut out sugars, you're cutting out, you know, what we use to make energy. That seems silly, in my opinion. So if you've ever seen someone on the Atkins diet, you know, they're all like gung-ho about it the first week. They're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm losing weight, you know. And then by the second week, they're coloring their face starts to fade a little bit. Uh, they look sickly almost. They start to get very lazy, I guess you could say. Why? Because they're not, they're not getting any energy. All their energy is, is gone because they're not eating anything for energy. So cutting out carbs, guys, if you're trying to lose weight, it's not the best thing to do. Um, moderate your carbs, you know, calm them down a little bit instead of eating like, you know, I don't know, a dozen donuts every morning. Try a half dozen. <laughs> Just teasing. Hopefully you don't eat a, a dozen of donuts every day. But, um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Dr. Atkins made the Atkins diet probably not the best thing, you know. All right. We're going to go over three polysaccharides. First one is starch. Now, plants are going to store their glucose, the monomers of carbohydrates, in this polysaccharide called starch. Now, that's only going to be in plants, all right? For us, we store it, we store it in this polysaccharide called glycogen, okay? That's gonna go to our liver, muscle cells, places where, hey, we might need some energy. We might need to break down that glycogen, convert it into individual uh, glucose molecules, and then use it for energy, okay? There's one more. So here's your starch, here's your glycogen. You guys can see they are pretty much very, very, very similar, all right? Now cellulose, that's this one down here. And there's a lot of individual fibers of glucose. It's not just like one strip, like up here. So the last one is called cellulose. Now, we talked about the starch, that's in plants. 
cellulose, also in plants, right? Now, the cellulose in plants is only going to be located in the plant cell walls, right? So the one thing I want to say about cellulose, guys, is we, as humans, we cannot digest cellulose, all right? There are some animals that can digest it, mostly your herbivores, like cows and um, horses. They can digest cellulose with no problem. Our bodies cannot. Yeah, we can break them down, but we can't really use them for energy. All right. So here are two different molecules of glucose. All right. It kind of stinks. We, yeah, we got three monomers. We got our glucose. We got our galactose. We got our fructose. But there's more than one glucose. There's one more orientation we can have our glucose in. So there's alpha glucose over here and beta glucose on the right side. What is the difference between them? They look very similar. The only difference between them is on carbon number one, on alpha, okay, the OH, the hydroxyl group, points downward. On beta, it points upward. Okay. So glucose originally, guys, is in a, um, a chain, a straight chain form, and it becomes more stable when it goes into this ring structure. And going into that ring structure, some of them are going to be up, and some of them are going to be down for the hydroxyl group. If you look down here, okay, look, see where our OHs are. That's why they highlight this one in yellow, okay? They're all highlighted in yellow. They're all at the bottom. The OH is attached to each one, which is now an O once they combine because the H goes away to form the water. All of them are pointing downward. That's why they say this is alpha, just like up here. The O is pointing downward, okay? Down here... The beta glucose, look where the OHs are. Now they're on opposite. So I'm just gonna mirror these ones. I'm gonna talk about the first carbon or first glucose here and the third glucose. And if you look at the OHs, okay, they're pointing down, and the O connected to them is pointing upward. Okay, so that goes with the beta glucose orientation. These ones here, there's our OH, so we flipped it upside down. The OH is on the top, that yellow OH. This CH2OH is on the bottom, so it's opposite. But look at carbon one. Carbon one would be here. Carbon one would be here. The O and the OH is pointing downward, but we flipped it, so actually it'd be pointing upward. So there's your difference between uh, alpha and beta glucose. Difference between them, structurally, yeah, that OH is a little bit different. Functionally, the beta glucose has a slightly higher melting point compared to the alpha one. And that's the only difference between them, guys, is the melting point. All right, so beta, a little bit higher melting point. Okay. Um, this one, guys, just a summary of everything. We're not going to worry about uh, which ones are in which, but this just tells you which ones are going to have the alpha, which ones are going to have the beta glucose. All right, starch has alpha, um, cellulose has the beta. And once again, there's your picture of your starch. There's a picture of your cellulose. All right. um, so in the cellulose, guys, those strands that were coming out of the glucose are called microfibrils. All right. They're just long strings. Okay, that's all you have to know for that. Nothing too crazy. We already talked about this one, guys. This the cellulose for us, it's insoluble. Again, most herbivores, cows. They have termites up there, um, horses. They're able to digest the cellulose, but we are unable to. Another polysaccharide, it's called uh, chitin. The CH forms a K sound, so chitin. This is found in the exoskeletons of arthropods, kind of like cockroaches and crustaceans and things like that. Um, it grows, that the exoskeleton grows with the animal. So once they are getting too big, they're going to shed that exoskeleton, in other words, shed that chitin, and yeah, you're going to get, get new. It's also in fungi. Uh, it adds, in a fungus, like a mushroom or something, the chitin adds some like, like rigidness to the outside of it, and some plants as well. It, it'll keep the plants crisp right, once you eat them, so 
in the mushrooms. That's why it's not like all mushy. They're slightly crisp. But. All right. Oh, one more thing about the, the chitin guys. So uh, fungi don't have a, a cell wall like plants do. So that's why the chitin is needed in order to make the outside crisp. The plants, some of the crispness, crispness like when you crunch into a vegetable, comes from the cellulose in the cell wall. But fungi don't have that, so that's why where the chitin comes in. All right, so that is all with carbohydrates. We'll do a little bit of lipids today, guys, and then we will call it a day. So lipids, um, let me just fill everything in here for us. Okay, so let me go down here to lipids. Lipids are going to be for energy storage. So lipids are going to help us to store energy. Our monomer is going to be a fatty acid. Polymers, we're going to have a few here. Oops. We're going to have triglycerides. We're going to have waxes. We're going to have steroids. And in our last one, which makes up the cell membrane, phospholipids, okay? Structure, almost the same as carbs, but for fatty acids, we only have two oxygens, okay? So with these ones, guys, let me give you an example here. An example might be like C, 10, H20, O2. Okay. Let me get our uh, subscripts going here. So there is a good example, guys. You can see, yeah, we might have that, you know, two to one ratio between carbon and hydrogen, but the oxygen is going to be a whole lot less than the other ones. And again, guys, I'm just doing this to keep you organized. So with respect to lipids, and we're just going to go through a few slides here. The lipids are going to be mostly hydrophobic. These are going to be things like fats. If you put them in water, they're not going to combine with the water. They're going to separate which means since water is polar, the lipids are going to be nonpolar. So for a fatty acid, we are going to have a carboxyl group. If you remember, that's the C uh, bonded to a OH and then bonded to or double bonded to an O. Um, let me draw that for you, actually. So we're going to have our C somewhere, double bonded to an O which is bonded to an OH, okay? That's our carboxyl group. That's gonna be on the one side of our fatty acid. And on the other side, it's going to be a long carbon skeleton, all right? It's going to be something, and I'll, I'll draw it here in a different color. We're gonna have it on the other side. It's just gonna be like something like a hydrocarbon, all right? So we're gonna have a bunch of C's on there, all right? I'm not going to draw all of them. It would be very, very, very long, but We'll just do an X over here for it's, it's just going to keep going, all right? Um, and then we'd have to put in our H's. Okay. So with this being a hydrocarbon, this tells us that this area is going to be nonpolar. With this being a carboxyl over here, if you remember what a carboxyl does, is it makes something acidic. That's why they're called a fatty acid, all right? Okay, so here is a fatty acid right here, okay? And what we're trying to make up here is we're going to make a triglyceride, so one of our polymers. So it's not as nice as the carbohydrates because the carbohydrates, it was, it was just like, okay, monosaccharide, boom, put it together to another one, we get a disaccharide. It's a little bit different because we're taking fatty acids and putting them to this, this skeleton over here, which is called glycerol. So how we make a triglyceride, tri meaning three, 
is we are going to, on each of these OHs, attach a fatty acid. So we would have one, two in the middle, and then the third one would go at the bottom OH. So in order to make a triglyceride, it's going to be three glycerols attached to a fatty acid. And that's exactly what this next, next slide says here. Okay. Um, this linkage here, where we're going through that dehydration reaction, okay, that bond in between our fatty acid and our glycerol is called an ester linkage. And here is your picture of the ester linkage. So that's it for our mono, uh, monomers of lipids, which are fatty acids. Okay? We're going to differentiate between two different fatty acids, but we'll do that tomorrow, guys. Have a good rest of your day.